A View from the Bridge is a fantastic little piece by Cherokee Paul McDonald in which the narrator, who was a former police officer himself uh, and a, a writer as well, ends up having to confront his own impatience as he realizes all of a sudden that he's been judging a situation incorrectly. Uh, it's sort of based on him walking along one day and a little boy along the side of the road asking him to help uh, catch a fish. Uh, because he can't necessarily, uh, he can't find his bait. So he wants uh, Paul McDonald to help him find the bait uh, so that he can go on. And of course, uh, McDonald sort of being, living his life on his own, being in his own world, as all of us are most of the time, doesn't want to be inconvenienced, but sort of ends up doing so anyway. Uh, this book, or this uh, story, ends up having a, a lot more sort of a nice description built around character uh, and built around dialogue. Uh, it actually says, partially covering his shaggy blonde hair was one of those blue baseball caps with gold braid on the bill and a sailfish patch sewn onto the peak. Covering his eyes and part of his face was a pair of those stupid-looking 50s-style wraparound sunglasses. So we get a few things here. We get a really, really specific description of his baseball cap, and we even get uh, McDonald going so far as to say that his sunglasses are stupid-looking, which I think is funny and demonstrates just you know, how far you can go with description. You can even be a little bit uh, flippant with it at times, although, of course, always be mindful of what's proper for certain settings such as academia. Uh, he does use a lot of dialogue in this piece, though. Hey, mister, would you help me, please? What do you want, kid? You know, like this sort of description shows, you know, hey, mister. You know, you can almost see the kid just by the fact that he would speak like that. And what do you want, kid, depicts our narrator in a certain light as well. Uh, then, going through all this dialogue of the, the kid catch, uh, has a fish on the line, and the narrator's trying to get him to reel it in, like, oh, hey, do it this way, like, leave the drag alone, and keep that rod tie up. Uh, crank, kid, crank, you didn't lose him, he's coming back towards you, bring in the slack, and he's, like, trying to coach him through it. All of this sort of enlivens the situation, gets us more invested in the narrative. That's what makes this piece less you know, essay-ish necessarily, and more almost like a story in that it's bringing you in, it's attracting you into the story that it's telling. And then, of course, after we get through all of this, the kid says, hey, mister, tell me what it looks like. Look down there and check him out. I said, he's beautiful. But then I looked up into those stupid-looking sunglasses, and it hit me. The kid was blind. And I think that this is a really fantastic, cathartic moment in the story because this whole entire time we've sort of been having to engage the narrator's frustration at being inconvenienced by this kid when he just wanted to, you know, be out doing his own thing. And now we understand that all along this kid has been blind and that was why he needed help in the first place. That's the big reveal uh, in which we are brought into things. And I think that that's a particularly interesting thing about this piece is that when talking about description, how on earth do you go about describing something uh, like what a fish looks like to a blind kid? And that's exactly what the narrator in this piece has to do. It says, he has all these big scales like armor all over his body. They're silver too, and when he moves, they sparkle. He has a strong body and a large, powerful tail. He has big round eyes, bigger than a quarter, and a lower jaw that sticks out past the upper one and is very tough. His belly is almost white, and his back is a gunmetal gray. So going into this, he's like having to describe this, trying to describe what this fish looks like to a blind child, which of course is, you know, a very difficult thing to do, but sort of drives home once again the importance of detail. Uh, and then, of course, at the end, there's that sort of cathartic moment in which the kid thanks him for helping, and then he responds, thank you for helping me. And it's in that that we end up getting sort of the emotional center of the piece, this sort of like almost a realization of the narrator of his own folly, and that's where the big epiphany is.